The future state is upon the DC universe, and things are getting very different in Gotham City. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Future State, the next Batman, issue number one, and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join this newest comic, we are in the not-too-distant future, and it seems that Gotham City has been completely and utterly taken control of by a group called the Magistrate. It would seem that in the city's never-ending battle to try and curb violence related to massed vigilantes, Gotham opted to sell out to a private military corporation. Meaning that not only is wearing a mask and fighting crime illegal, but it's actively punishable by death at the hand of a roving kill squad that ironically calls themselves peacekeepers. It's amidst all this upheaval we are introduced to our new mysterious Batman, who has decided to not only go out into the night to fight the good fight, like in this case, tracking down a dangerous serial rapist, but continue to do so even though that means putting a giant giant target on his own back for the police. In fact, new Batman wonders to himself in his internal monologue how old Batman ever managed to spin this many plates at once before admitting to himself, you know what, I am Batman. Best not to think like that or I'll just drive myself crazy with comparisons. Man, I like this new dude's attitude. But who is this new Batman? That's the mystery, or at least it was clearly supposed to be a mystery before DC just got cold feet and up and told everyone who the new Batman in future stands. It is. Which is a real shame because John Ridley, the writer, clearly had some sort of mystery plot in mind here wherein we wouldn't exactly know who the new Batman is right away. At first, we seek to imply that it's actually Luke Fox. After all, he knew Bruce, who is currently missing right now, and he was Batwing. And at the end of Joker War, his family, the Foxes, were not only put in charge of Wayne Enterprises as a company, but also put in charge of the massive Wayne fortune, so it would only make sense. But for some reason, DC Marketing decided to dispense with the whole fun mystery and just up and tell us that this new Batman is actually Luke's long-lost brother, Timothy Fox. Timothy was always the black sheep of the Fox family, and it's clear there's a lot of bitterness and resentment between him and his brother Luke. In fact, they only come face to face with each other when they're checking on their sister Tamara in the hospital. Furthermore, Timothy says he doesn't want to be called Timothy anymore, instead going by the name Jace, which I think actually makes a lot of sense when we stop and consider that Tim Drake is also going to be part of these future state titles, and having two Tims would be confusing. Now, what does super crime look like in the future state? Well, same as it ever was, instead of the joke gang of Batman Beyond, we have the Bane Lentos. These guys are recruiting right now, and we see two poor young brothers caught in their crosshairs. If they want to join the gang, though, and move up in the world, they're going to have to blood in. Meaning that they're going to have to go kill a rival gang member, and oh really, you're using guns? You guys sure aren't dedicated to the Bane theme. If you want to join the Bane gang, you should have to break someone's back and make them humble. Alright, so that's what criminals are up to, but what about the regular workaday Gotham cops? As we see through the eyes of one lady detective, it's not great being caught between a massive pissing contest involving the magistrate and the heroes. The detective, too, is also working on a brand new case. She seems to think that some ex-cop may very well be using their knowledge of the criminal justice system to help criminals plan massive heists take a cut of their action, and then help them escape. Now, the Bane gang's attempted drive-by ends up going horribly wrong when they catch the attention of Batman. Dealing with these punks is ultimately child's play, but here's where things start to get interesting. Taking out the gangsters was the easy part, but dealing with the magistrate who are coming to mop stuff up, that's the hard part. Jace recognizes that these kids were about to do wrong and that they should probably be punished, but at the same time, too, he knows that the magistrate is going to shoot them on sight. So instead, this new Batman for this new Gotham City ends up finding a new solution. He picks the kids up and vows that he's going to send them to social services. But that they better straighten up and fly right or else next time Batman might not be there to help them as this story comes to a close. But hey, that's not all the future state you get as most of these brand new books for the next two months are actually going to be containing a ton of really cool backup stories. First up, we have a story about the newest incarnation of the Outsiders. It seems that Signal, Duke Thomas, is using his souped-up muscle car to help a bunch of anti-magistrate youth protesters get out of the city. Assisting him is Katana, who now has a jetpack because it's the future and jetpacks are the fucking balls. It's not all easy going, though, as we discover the Magistrate is able to make some pretty compelling offers to morally ambiguous characters like Caliber, one of the new on-again, off-again allies for the Outsiders in this newest run. 
Katana fights the good fight against a cybernetically enhanced caliber, but in the end she's ultimately assisted by the reappearance of Black Lightning. It would seem that Jefferson was one of the many heroes that went missing when the Magistrate came to power, but for him though, it wasn't because he was dead or on the run, it was because he's lost his physical form and become a being of pure electricity now. Meaning that he now gives a whole new meaning to his classic credo of when justice like lightning should appear. It's the last story in this collection though that really ended up surprising me. It's called Arkham Knights and as the title may lead you to believe it actually focuses on Astrid Arkham, the last daughter of Arkham Asylum. Who has gathered together her own Robin Hood style army of some of the more morally grey Batman villains like Two-Face, Clayface, Anarchy. And together they're all striking back at the Magistrate in an attempt to, as Astrid said, return the sun. This is actually a really amazing use of a character that comics pretty much forgot since her appearance, but it gets even better. The Arkham Knights operate out of the old Wayne Manor. And unlike Batman, who was perfectly okay beating up on the mentally ill and throwing them into the revolving hell door that was Arkham Asylum, Astrid actually goes out of her way to try and help the people under her care. In fact, a lot of them, like Dr. Phosphorus and Two-Face, are saner now than they've ever been. The Arkham Knights' next big mission is taking out Peacekeeper 12. The Peacekeepers, as we discover, are a bunch of corporately backed sheriffs who, with the help of the magistrate soldiers, run their turfs like their own private fiefdoms. Together, using their teamwork and unique assortment of powers, the Arkham Knights are able to take out Peacekeeper 12 and make Gotham City just a little bit safer and a little bit freer as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Future State, the next Batman issue number one, and I gotta say, there's a lot to really enjoy in this story, even if DC went out of their way to spoil some of the twists and turns. The John Ridley Batman stuff is good, it's a nice slow burn that gets you acclimated to everything that's going on in New Gotham and all the different types of injustices that this Batman has to deal with that the original never did. Outsiders in the future may actually be way cooler than Outsiders in the present ever were, and the Arkham Knight stuff is an actual revelation. I get the strong feeling that DC is using Future State as a kind of testing ground for new ideas and new series they'll probably do in the future, and man, I really hope Arkham Knights becomes a team book. I read the hell out of that. Overall, I'd give this one a solid 8.5 out of 10. I hope all these Future State books are this interesting, this varied, and this much fun, honestly. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Joel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye